Hi, I'm Andy Jones. Welcome to Art Talk. It is National Mod Podge Month, and I'm so excited to share with you a little bit more about Mod Podge on this episode of Art Talk. I have taught literally thousands of people how to paint. If you have any desire to paint, I can teach you how to do it. But today, I'm going to talk to you about Mod Podge, which is a decoupage glue, sealer, and finish all in one. And we wouldn't be here today talking about Mod Podge had it not been for this wonderful woman. This is Jan Whetstone. She is the inventor of Mod Podge. And so let's go ahead and thank Jan for creating this great product. And let's talk about how to say it. It is Mod, Mod Podge. Podge. Now the other voice that you're hearing um, saying Mod, Mod Podge. Podge with me is Dylan Estes. So thanks for being here and being my uh, great cameraman today, Dylan. Of course, we're here to ward off all of the Mod Podgers. Yes, I will show you the label even says Mod Podge. So there's not Mod. It's just mod. So after this episode, no one has any excuse to mess that up. If you're going to paint with Andy, you say Mod Podge the correct yes. way. And so let me just show you another great um, photo of Jan. And she is doing what all crafters, even to this day, do. You craft in your best outfit with jewels on as well. So this was probably back in the 1960s. So uh, Jan was doing this. Uh, Mod Podge was invented 56 years ago. She uh, invented Mod Podge in a bathtub in her home right here in the Atlanta area, and it has been going strong ever since. So I can't resist showing you the very first uh, can of Mod Podge that you could purchase. So this was a lovely, um, I guess this is an eight ounce or maybe a four ounce can. Yeah. But somebody in 1967 forgot to put the lid on. So um, it has not uh, withstood the test of time, but this is the original put up of Mod Podge. And through the years, it has changed a little bit. Uh, it got a makeover when uh, she sold the formula to um, Connoisseur Studios. And so they gave it a mod look and a large 16 ounce jar and so you could see the typical crafter there and on the other side we've got typical craft projects that could be made with your uh, mod podge so great to have these kind of vintage uh, items to show you and here we have what the uh, 16 ounce bottle looks like today so still kind of a throwback to the original kind of funky 1960s um, label, and we will always have this great pink and orange uh, logo uh, with on our Mod Podge bottles. So not only was Jan uh, popular, she was popular enough to have a nice article in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution with a nice write-up about her glue and glaze idea. And you can see in 1978, Connoisseur Studios had a great catalog showing you how to use a number of different products, including Mod Podge. So it's been around, it's tried and true, it has stood the test of time. And if it's not in a catalog, then there were craft books. So this uh, particular book was uh, for sale at the Target stores. Uh, so Target has been around a while, and so has Mod Podge with its great uh, classic craft projects. Just doesn't get more modern than that. And I remember as a kid uh, in our den, we had um, some bookcases on one side of our fireplace and there were a whole stack of uh, these uh, paperback craft books. And I remember pulling this book out and always remember that dresser with the rooster on it. So this was a book in the house when I was growing up. And so people were using Mod Podge then. My mom always had it was stored in our laundry room in a cabinet above the sink there. But you've got, uh, here's where Plaid was working with this. This was in 1992. 
So that I was going to say was not that long ago, but I guess it's a while ago. It was over twenty years. Yeah, but that's okay. It's I mean, it's, but it kind of shows, you know, th this is when Plaid got a hold of it, and we really blew the formula to. You know, it's it's not just to one, everything now. Yeah, not just one thing. So this was the twenty fifth anniversary in nineteen ninety two, and uh, I love thinking that the nineties were just a few years ago, mm -hmm. and they were more like, what, 30 years ago now? Mm -hmm. But we're excited this year because Glossy, the mascot for Mod Podge, is turning 56, so we're celebrating the 56th anniversary of Mod Podge. So Mod Podge was, even in its early days, not just a bottle of glue. Uh, here was a uh, whole complete craft kit that had wood plaques, it had prints in it, bottles of Mod Podge, everything you needed to create a beautiful craft project, so and it was kind of like a um, like a craft hack at the time, right? Oh, like you was... would take these kits would come with real paintings, like images of yeah. classic paintings mm -hmm. that had and... everything you needed right in there. Uh -huh. Mod Podge really was one of the first uh, times when people were moving away from uh, solvent-based or oil-based products. So everything used you used to when I was growing up, you had to clean everything up with uh, mineral spirits and all that kind of stuff. And Mod Podge is of course non-toxic and water cleanup. So it was very revolutionary that you could continue your very popular decoupage products, do them much faster and with less uh, toxic materials. So it's a great, great product. And we are going to incorporate uh, a technique today. It's been around for a long time, but it is everywhere now. What's the expression? You can't swing a cat now without hitting um, a Mod Podge technique somewhere on social media. So I am going to show you, uh, we're going to be painting on a canvas today, but we are going to Mod Podge napkins onto our canvas. These are not wipe your mouth napkins. These are crafting napkins. And they're fancy party napkins. Fancy party napkins mm -hmm. with beautiful designs on them. And you can find them in your brick and mortar craft stores, or you can order them online. And they are everywhere in every design, whether it's everyday things, seasonal, you name it. There is a beautiful napkin out there just waiting for you to craft with it. So we are going to take our napkins and I'm going to give you I think one of the best pro tips that I can for this technique. You need to open up your napkin and most napkins are going to be at least two ply. So I just come over to the edge of my napkin and we're going to separate the design from the backing sheet. And they do this great little thing where they just kind of press and emboss the napkins to hold the plies together. And so then you could do something with that or just get it out of the way. But then you think you're ready to go, but you're not because you have to check to make sure that your napkin isn't three ply. Because some of these companies are sneaky and they make three ply napkins. And oftentimes on the packaging, they will just say multi ply. All right, blue painter's tape, a crafter and artist's best friend. So I've got two little pieces of blue painter's tape and I'm going to put one piece on the top of my napkin and I'm going to put another piece on the back of the napkin. And then, look at there, here is that mystery ply. We absolutely do not need this interior ply so we get rid of that. And now we are left with just a single ply of your napkin. So the blue painter's tape is worth the cost of today's admission because it really does get rid of that extra ply and gives you just the single ply that you need. Now, I am working on a four by 12 canvas and my napkin happens to be big enough that I can just lay it down in one piece. But if I had a bigger surface, I could simply tear my napkin or open up more than one napkin and use some pieces of napkin and put them on like a collage. But let's get to the fun stuff. Actually using Mod Podge to adhere the napkin to the surface. So I've got a little baby two ounce bottle of Mod Podge and I'm going to just squirt some Mod Podge out on the canvas. And I've got a Mod Podge brush. 
which I'm going to spread this Mod Podge out onto the surface of the canvas. And I'm going to cover the entire canvas, making sure that I have covered it out to the edge. Now, you don't need an ocean of Mod Podge on your surface, but don't be skimpy with it either. Uh, put a nice amount so that you are not working very hard at all to distribute your Mod Podge. And make sure that there are no dry spells, dry spells, dry spots. Um, I might be going through a dry spell myself. Um, but you want to just make sure that you've got the whole surface completely covered and check it in the light so that you know that there are no dry spots. That also helps if you need to reposition something that gives you a little wiggle room. It does indeed. Now, Dylan and I are both crafty kids. We grew up in very uh, creative homes. And so Mod Podging was something that we probably knew how to do by the time we were in elementary school. All right, so I'm going to lay down my napkin on my canvas and I'm going to take my brush with Mod Podge in it and I'm gonna start brushing from the center out, making sure to get as many wrinkles out as I can. But I want to let you know that if there are some wrinkles in there, don't worry about it because we're going to paint right over those. I'm putting a little bit more Mod Podge on so that my brush glides across the surface because your napkin is now one ply of wet tissue. And if you give any resistance uh, to this surface, you're going to tear your napkin. So add a little Mod Podge on there so that everything slides easily on the surface. And I am using the matte formula of Mod Podge, so we won't have any sheen to this when we are done, and it will be much easier to paint on than painting on a slick surface. As Andy's doing that, you can see to his left, we now offer Mod Podge in a ton of different sizes. He's using the handy two ounce bottle, but we have eight ounce, 16, 32, 64, all the way up to a gallon. And let me tell you, there will be some of you who are watching who will become uh, Mod Podge maniacs, and that gallon size to you is going to seem like it is not quite enough. Um, you'll find all sorts of uses for Mod Podge and there are a million and one ways to use it. If you can think about it, you can Mod Podge. And so I'm gonna set that brush aside and I'm going to let this dry. And then when it is dry, I can either tear off or cut off this excess napkin. All right, so here I have my canvas where I have uh, Mod Podged my napkin on and this is dry. And I can come back and just literally tear off any of this excess napkin and get it out of my way. And I am ready now to decorate this surface. So I think if you need to take a break, now would be a good time to take a break. And then we're gonna shift our focus from the wonderful world of Mod Podge to painting. I'd like to take a minute to thank Plaid Enterprises for sponsoring Art Talk. They are the makers of Folk Art Acrylics, which I absolutely love using. I've used this paint since I was a young tot, and now that I'm an old fart, I still use this paint. We have a 17-piece set that we've curated just for you. Ordering information is in the description below, and we also have great brushes for you. We have a seven-piece set of Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brushes. These are absolutely incredible. I use them every time I paint. <laughs> And I've never done that in my entire life. Now, let's get back to our video. All right, folks, it is time to paint. So I'm gonna put out some Folk Art Matte Acrylics on my palette, and the first color I'm going to put out is some Thicket, which is a nice dark green. And I'm also gonna put out a tiny little bit of Pure Black. We'll come back to Pure Black a little bit later on in our painting. And what's our subject matter today? Our subject matter today, um, you can call it just about any name you want to. These are cornflowers or bachelor buttons or composite flowers or wildflowers or blue little multi-petal flowers, whatever you want to call it. It's going to look like Ladybird Johnson has thrown up on your canvas. 
All right, and we're gonna start with no uh, pattern today. I know usually we have a nice line drawing to get started with, but today we're going to, I was gonna say we're gonna play it by ear, but we're not playing it by ear. I'm gonna tell you exactly you have how- a plan, but it'll grow naturally out of the pattern, if you will. <laughs> yes, just like those wildflowers on the side of the road. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're gonna paint five of these little flowers. So I'm gonna have one flower kind of up here at the top. So I put a little dab of thicket there for the center of that flower. And then I'm gonna have another flower over here and one down here. That's three, we'll have another one here, that's four. And then we'll put another one, we'll say down here, so that's five. So they're scattered out, they're not the same distance apart, and this is how we are going to lay out our design. So five dots of green is where we're starting. Now I'm using a number 12 flat brush and I'm picking up Thicket and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of pure black just to darken my Thicket. And what I'm going to do is start by creating the stem of this lower flower. And you can see I just used the chisel edge of my brush, standing the brush straight up and I pull down a slightly curved line and I'm moving this around, and I'm not sure if that is what my cameraman wants me to do or yeah. not. You're doing good. Okay, all right, so then we're gonna, let's just go ahead and go all the way up to the top, because that's the big scary one. So I'm gonna start right at where I've made that little dab, and I'm gonna pull down, making sure that my line has a nice, graceful curve to it. Just as easy as that. All right, I'm resting my knuckle on my canvas, which helps steady my hand. I don't think that I'm so good that I can do this without some help, but I'm resting my hand down on my canvas so that I get a nice thin line. Can you see it's curved? This one should come this way and be slightly curved. Doesn't matter if it crosses over, that's perfectly fine. And then we'll give this little guy over here another little curved line. And they don't have to all be perfectly thin and gorgeous. They can be some a little bit of variation in these because we don't want them to all look the same. And now I like to turn my painting upside down so that I can pull toward me because it's just easier. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and we're going to pull up another little stem like that. And we're gonna put another one over here. And these aren't hooked to anything. These are just loose stems. You know, this subject matter and project in general is kind of fitting for the celebration of Mod Podge Month because this is very reminiscent of the Volkswagen Beetle that Jan iconically um, covered with a floral bed sheet with yes. Mod Podge. And you can go online and Google Mod Podge Volkswagen and you can see the photos of it. It's out there for all the world to see. And for the 60th anniversary, I've been uh, petitioning uh, those with power here at Plaid to do that in our community garden, and park a beetle and Mod Podge it. I think that would be a good little PR stunt, don't you think, Andy? I think it's a great PR stunt if that's what you want to do. I would need to do it inside a garage where it can be a little bit more climate controlled oh, sure. because I live for conditioned air especially in the summer. All right, so I'm just gonna put maybe one more little um, stem on there. And this area here looks like it needs a stem too, so we'll go ahead and give it one. All right, so hard part over. I'm going to set my number 12 flat brush aside, and I'm going to pick up a number eight flat brush. And I am using the Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brushes, which I adore. And there is a link in the uh, description box so that you can order those brushes if you want to have the same brushes I use. And now we're gonna paint some leaves. And Dylan is thinking, how on earth is Andy gonna paint those leaves? He's going to do this. He's gonna make a little stroke where I start out thin, get thick, and then thin again. So you just have to think thin, thick, thin. So I'm gonna start right up here at the top and I'm starting kind of down on my stem a little bit thin, thick, thin, all right? There's a beautiful leaf. And if yours looks different than mine, hey, that's okay. Does not really matter. And I'm gonna do another little thin, thick, thin leaf here and maybe another one going that way.
But I'm just continuing with these thin, thick, thick strokes, creating lots of different shapes. They're kind of moving different ways. And obviously I'm just putting these on and letting my eye tell me, oh, there looks like a little blank spot here. So let's go put a leaf down here. Or I need a little leaf kind of coming across here. That kind of covers up that area. You really want to just really distribute these little leaves so that they kind of fill in uh, your, your design. Don't put all of them at the bottom or all of them at the top. Just kind of make sure that they have a nice kind of even distribution across your painting. I'm thinking that's probably enough for right now. So I'm going to wipe out my brush really well on my little shop towel here. And we're going to get some sunny yellow out on our palette. And I'm also going to put out just a little bit of titanium white. And then we're going to come back and continue to paint these leaves or give these leaves a little bit of a highlight. All right, so I'm picking up a little bit of just thicket. I'm going to stay out of that extra dark color there because we don't need to have dark color in our highlights. So I always said about getting my hair highlighted. You don't need dark color in those highlights, Andy. So it was years ago when I actually had your frosted that. tips era. <laughs> actually, I think I missed the frosted tips era. I missed almost every era with hair. And one interesting thing I want to bring back to the mispronunciation, the common mispronunciation of Mod Podge. Um, maybe a little explaining would help. Mod Podge actually stands for modern decoupage. Yes. Not modern decoupage, you know? So that's why the mod is mod. For modern. Right. Or probably when it was named, it would have been modern because that was the vernacular. In the, in the 60s, you know, the 60s were not modern, they were modern. But modern decoupage, indeed. All right, so now I've got this nice, light, yellowy-green color mixed up, and we are going to highlight our thin, thick, thin strokes with a thin, thick, thin stroke of that light highlight color. So we're just going to bop around our painting, adding this highlight color to our leaves. Now, we don't have to add it to every leaf, and we certainly don't have to cover up every leaf that we've put on, but we are just moving around, giving our leaves a quick little highlight, adding some visual interest because now we've got dark and light colors on here. Don't be fussy with this. These little leaves are not the star of the show. All right, so just a little bit more of this highlighting going on, and I'm not going to highlight the stems. I think just giving these leaves a little bit of a, a highlight is all we need to do. And so you can still remember we've got our five dabs, one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to start painting those beautiful little blue flowers by putting some Brilliant Ultramarine out on our palette. And that is a very primary blue color. I'm going to wipe out, and I think actually this time I'm actually going to rinse out my number 12 flat just to get rid of any of that green and black that was in there and dry it off nicely on my towels. And then we're going to pick up some of this blue. Now, let me just show you a little illustration here on my palette. Say that's my green dot for my center. I am not going to put these petals equally spaced around my center and then just kind of fill in around them. That's not what we want. We want to give our flowers some personality and a little bit of an angle. So we're going to start some of them at the back and then the ones that come off to the sides probably are going to be a little bit longer and the ones in the front we're going to make sure that they are much longer. But we're giving our little flower this kind of personality and individuality by the way that we place our petals around there. And it's much nicer than having like, you know, straight clock hands on there. 
All right. So did that make sense to you, Dylan? Yeah, absolutely. Make okay. Look a little more organic. Yeah. And uh, everybody's is going to look a little bit different, and that's absolutely what we want. So I am going to show you over here. We're going to do one that's basically in profile. So I'm going to start up here at the top, and I am going to dab a little flower petal on kind of here at the back, the width of my number 12 flat. And if you're painting tiny flowers, then shift down to a smaller brush by all means. All right, so the petals that are coming off to the side are gonna be a little bit longer and they're going to kind of droop down a little bit. And then we'll just continue to put some petals on there. And I'm just using the chisel edge of my brush kind of putting these little petals on. There's not a certain number of petals that each flower should have, uh, but you should have uh, a little bit of a break between petals so that it's not just a dark blue circle. All right, so we're gonna leave that alone. We're gonna come over here and do the same thing here. But notice how I started the very back of that, this back of the flower was straight up and down. This one's off to the side. So as we give a couple of little Taps with our brush there, we're getting some little petals off to the back, and then our side petals will droop. And I'm coming right over those leaves, not paying any attention to anything except getting these blue petals on my flower. And it doesn't look like we're doing much of anything, but it doesn't take much to make these little flowers pop in just a second. And tapping on our petals making sure that we've got enough petals and we still have a little bit of a break in between some of them. So they're kind of raggedy around the outside. And you see the shape of this flower is different than the shape of this flower because we don't want our flowers all to be the same. Every flower's got to be a little different. All right, let's do another one down here. And this time, let's go ahead and start it. There's the back of that flower. Put in a couple of little petals. And then our side petals, they kind of droop down. Let's get those on there. And then we can just kind of fill in real quick. Sometimes people make painting flowers so hard. And it doesn't have to be hard. Everything can be done as simply or as complex as you feel. But I'm loving the way that looks because that's a little bit off, a little bit askew, as it were. It's a little bit longer over there. And we got another little flower down here, so let's give this one some little love. And we're simply tapping these petals on. And all we need to do is look and make sure that our flower is nicely shaped and it has a different shape than the other flowers. Because it shouldn't be the same size, shouldn't be the same shape, and we want them to be different distances apart. All right, now, this little flower here is just gonna be like turned up on its edge, so we're only gonna see the flower in profile. So it's getting couple of little petals at the side and then we're just bringing a few right around and that's where we're going to stop. So it doesn't get any front petals because this is just the side view. All right, if you want to bring your painting to this level and take a little bit of a break, you can pause your video and we'll be back in just a second. Okay, we have our ultramarine blue or brilliant ultramarine on our uh, little wildflowers here and I'm going to put out a little bit of Calypso Sky, which is kind of an aqua color, kind of pale tropical blue color. Just a fun color to add to our flowers. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of my blue that we started with and a little bit of this kind of tropical blue color just on half the brush. And we're going to start again at the top where we began our flower journey and I'm going to highlight from the outside edge, pulling in toward the center of our flower. I'm not pulling all the way down on the petal, mainly sticking to the outside edge. 
and I'm not going to do all of every petal. I might hit one and I'm going to leave that petal dark and we'll highlight this one. So I'm just going to tap a little bit on and not do the whole petal. These are your flowers and you can make them as bright or as dark as you want them to be. And I think it's easier to turn your canvas around so that you can always be pulling in toward the center. And as I run out of this light blue color, I'm going to pick up some more, tap it on at the outside edge, and just basically give it a little pull in. All right, so you can see we've got some light color around the outside edge, and it's dark in the center. That's exactly what we want. Whew, it's tough work, Dylan. Raising a farm, cutting the flowers, putting them in a vase, then painting them onto this canvas. Actually, Andy, you've been working hard. I have been. I, Dylan's laughing about growing up on a farm. I did grow up uh, out in, as we used to call it, out in the country. And I guess at the time we were living out there, it was... You didn't, you didn't, quote, go to town unless you absolutely needed something. So the idea of like, oh, there's nothing here that I really want to eat. Let's go maybe grab something from McDonald's. Well, a McDonald's was a 30 to 40 minute drive, and you just did not do that. And the ice cream machine probably still didn't work, even if you did drive for 30 minutes. Oh, if I drove 30 minutes to make a specific trip for ice cream and it wasn't there... I would be hard pressed to be polite, or as my mama would say, to be nice. Um, but no, we um, we still we had milk delivery. So I mean, it was we did live out in the country, and we didn't really we didn't raise livestock or that sort of thing. Um, but we always had a bunch of dogs, and my dad was a huge dog lover. And he liked the bulldogs. So we had, you know, always two or three bulldogs around the house. And they were always nice. That we, um, the crop that we dealt with was sugar cane to make cane syrup, which I don't know if I've expressed to our Art Talk audience how much I dislike pecans. No pecans, no walnuts, uh, none of that. Okay because we grew up in a pecan grove and there was always the, you have to go, you know, take that five gallon bucket and go fill it up with pecans before you can do, you know, something you wanted to do. So I grew to hate pecans, picking them up, hate the taste of them. Um, in another Art Talk episode, um, Stephen and I, Stephen White, uh, my other um, videographer, we were talking about that we don't like nuts, but we both like cashews. So we did not have a cashew tree, but the pecans, people can always have them if they want them. I don't need them in brownies. I don't need them in cookies. I am perfectly fine never having another pecan. And it's kind of like the opposite of the little red hen. I won't pick them up, I won't crack them, I won't pick them out, and I won't eat them. So you can have all of that fun all to yourself. And so we're just still stroking on some of this light blue. And again, not doing all of the petals and not bringing it all the way down to the center. So I keep saying some of the same things over and over and over, but it's important that we get these um, kind of ideas or principles across to you. And on every Art Talk lesson, I try to make sure that you get some good basic techniques as well as have a little fun. Okay, five flowers almost done. I am going to now take a little, I just wiped my brush off. And I have one half of the brush that had light paint in it and one that still had some of my ultramarine blue in it. So now I'm going to take the light part of my brush and stick it in 
some titanium white and blend that out on the palette. And we're going to come back and give some of our petals an extra highlight. Not all of them, not everywhere on every petal, but some of the petals that we've highlighted, let's just come back and pull a little white highlight down in toward the center. Not covering up the center, we want to keep it dark in the center. And we don't want to cover up all of this kind of light aqua blue color that we put on, but we're just highlighting. And this is a pretty simple way to develop a busy uh, multi-petal little flower. Kind of helps pull them out of the background. Absolutely. And there are so many varieties of this little kind of uh, composite flowers. And they come in just about every color of the rainbow. And surprisingly enough, they are still discovering new species of these kind of wildflowers. There was a woman, I believe she was in Florida, and somebody from some wildlife or yeah, wildlife conservation group noticed uh, in her yard a little bit of an unusual uh, flower. And so they asked her if they could take some samples of her flowers and whatnot. And it was a brand new species of a composite flower. And they were asking her how she maintained these flowers. And she goes, I get up there on my riding lawnmower and mow them down. <laughs> and that was the way that she was keeping this brand new and obviously very rare species of flowers alive. She just mowed them down. But they are beautiful little flowers. And as you can see, they're not difficult to paint. You just have to make sure that you keep some variety. So. Some ha still have some of the light blue showing, some still have the dark blue showing, and they're dark in toward the centers. I guess one of the things that I wish I could really instill in every one of you who is painting is to learn to kind of look with a critical eye at what you're doing. So rather than just blindly paint, take a look at your flower and think, have I done the same thing everywhere? Do I need to come back and add some different blue so that you have some variety in your flowers? And you can't just blindly paint. You have to, uh, as I like to say, you've got to mix a little brains with your paint. You have to think a little bit about what you're doing and evaluate. Uh, it's like if you cook a lot, you learn to taste as you're uh, cooking something. And the same way when you're painting, you have to really stop and look and make sure that you're doing what you want and that you're starting to get the results that you want as you're painting. Because there's nothing worse than thinking you're finished and then taking a look at it maybe after you've been away from it for a few hours and you look at it and you're like, I don't remember painting it like that. Who came in and messed up my painting when I wasn't looking? So always be looking and evaluating your painting so that you can make adjustments on the fly, as it were, and have a nice, interesting little flower there. So I think I'm done with these flowers. They're, they're looking pretty good to me. And that means it is time to actually paint in the center of our four flowers where you can see the center. So I'm going to take my number eight flat brush and some pure black. And I'm just going to use the corner of my brush and I'm going to tap, 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 and dab, 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 uh, some little black splotchy center on my flower. And we're going to do that on all of them. And it's not really round. Let me show you what it looks like here on my palette so you can just see what I'm doing. That's basically what I'm doing, just some little black dabs. It's kind of oval in shape. And this is why we wanted to keep the center dark so that our um, center of our flower doesn't stand out like some huge sore thumb. Because if we've gotten light color down into the center, then this black that we're putting on now would just be too stark. But it just kind of melts into those flower uh, petals. And now I'm going to take my number two script liner brush, which is a nice long liner brush. And I'm going to pick up some water on the brush and thin down some titanium white. As 
I want this paint to come off my brush super easy. And then here's another pro tip. Anytime you've put your liner brush in water and you've uh, going to thin down some paint, I like to make sure that I touch the area where the bristles meet the metal ferrule of the brush right on my shop towel and that will pull any moisture off the ferrule or out from the base of the bristles so that when I touch my brush to the surface I don't get a big bleed out of water. So tip worth its weight in gold. And I'm going to touch on a few little dots of white And I'm just going to take some of that excess paint off my brush. And we're tapping and dabbing some white on the centers of our flower. You don't want too many of these and you definitely don't want to line them up like some little bug has crawled across the front of your flower depositing little white dots. And this little flower is up on its side so you don't see the white or you don't see the center of the flower so we don't have to paint that in. But we are going to come back to that little flower there. I'm going to wipe my brush out, clean that black out. And the usually on the back side of a flower where all the petals hide uh, is called the calyx. And that's when it's all closed up as a bud and then it opens up, the petals come out and the calyx is on the back side of your flower. So I'm going to take a little thicket, a little sunny yellow, and a little white. This is the same thing that we highlighted our flowers with. And we're going to paint the quickest little calyx on here. And I'm going to do that by just taking my brush and just dabbing on what would be the little green parts hanging out at the back of the flower. And that's the calyx on there. And like that, boom, we are done with our little bachelor buttons, cone flowers, corn flowers, composite flowers, whatever you want to call them, we're done with them. Mod flowers. Mod flowers. <laughs> Absolutely. So that is our little composite flowers on a Mod Podge background. Thanks for watching today. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. The, we don't have a pattern this time because you can do this obviously by yourself. Uh, the links to our curated set of folk art acrylic paints and our brushes are in the description box below. If you'd like to leave us a compliment, you can do that in the comments section below. And if you want to chat with me, you can email me at art underscore talk at platonline.com. Thanks everybody.